Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about making strawberry pots. Um, as you can see, this pot next to me is looking beautiful. I just put it together yesterday and I want to share with you these growing tips. And I've been doing this for five consecutive years now. And I've been growing strawberry for decades, but I've been experimenting with a few different designs and I think I finally got this mastered and I want to share this with you. Um, Come and take a look closely at what I did yesterday, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get here together today. So you'll see over here, these are all my plants. These are all recycled plants from last year, and take a look over here at how horrible this looks. And here we are now at the second week of February. These are some of the runners that didn't make it to the ground and, and ended up rotting and dying. These are the old parent plants from last year, and some of them ended up also not making it down here, as you can see. This one here is barely holding on to life, but it gave off all of these runners and it's just barely holding on. We're gonna help improve this, but take a look at what we ended up with now here. You can take a look, we've got these you know, beautiful leaves and keep in mind, all of this came off of a pot very similar to this. We've got a nice blossom, which is gonna help support our next fruit. And you can see how beautiful this looks. And what I did at the top this year, unlike last year, you can see last year we had these, um, strawberry plants on the top, and there's room for at least one or two um, strawberry plants. I've had other years in the past where I've put flowers or I've planted a small little tree um, just to do something with contrast, but I think that this is gonna be the best solution is, I just put some wood chips at the top, I put a couple of inches, and I've left plenty of room that when I go to water the plants, and I take my watering can, I can just water it from the top and just soak the entire top area and that'll run through the pot and water all of the plants along the side. On the contrary, what's happening over here, if you take a look, every time I go to water, and these strawberry plants originally started off way up here in the pot, near the top, and every time I go to water, the soil continues to wash away, and it works its way through all of these openings, even down here, the water just runs and passes through, and I'm sure the rest of you are having the same issue where the soil just ends up washing away between waterings, starting in spring and ending in fall. So what we wanna to do to prevent this is do a system more similar to this. And I'm gonna run through all the steps now, and let's start over there. Follow me. Third pot, I found this one as a runner in the garden. I just wanted to demonstrate, this is one that I pulled out of the garden. I want to show you how beautiful these strawberries are. And this is not as good as they get. It gets even better than this. But you can see here's three different sizes of strawberry. Something already got to this and started um, eating it, probably a slug. Um, but you can see that they're nice sized strawberries. I don't know the flavor of the variety. I've grown, again, about five or six years ago, three to four different varieties of strawberries. This was our favorite, so we continue to propagate it. Um, and now it's the only strawberry that we're growing in our pots. And we propagate these by runners, which look like these. Let me see if I can find one. Um, if we take a look over here, you can see what happened is this here is the parent plant and it sends out this runner, creates strawberry number one, and then ran off a little further and created strawberry plant number two. Some of these that landed in the ground, and I can show you where these pots were before, they actually made it. Check this out real quick before we start. So one of our pots was laying right here on top of this bulb that I didn't see that was underground. So that's the reason that it's all covered in white. But one of the strawberry pots was in this area and um, we just moved it a couple days ago and it sent these runners, which you can see here by these brown twigs that are running. And then these created these additional strawberry plants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reach around it. And these little pups are your best starter plants, even better than last year's parent plants. These pups give the plant a brand new fresh start. And here I just pulled it out of the ground and I got with it most of these roots. Something interesting I wanna point out again, there's so much to see and learn. You can see all this white, what looks like mold. And you can even see some of these hairs. These are the hyphae or the roots of the mycorrhizal fungi. And actually we dig in a little further and we can even see that we've got some worms. So you can see that there's a lot of life in the soil. It's the importance of growing things organically and not using chemical fertilizers so you don't harm all of this life that's in the soil. And here's a third strawberry plant I was also able to uproot. 
I'm just grabbing and taking as many of those roots out and let's go transfer them to, to our new pot. Follow me. So these are the runners that we just pulled off and this is a, another basket of other runners I found from other parts of the garden. garden. So we're gonna put those here and you can see we now have a surplus of plants to work with to recreating our new strawberry pot. The first thing we're gonna do is get these strawberries out. So we're gonna just uproot them like so. And I can simply do this with my hands. I'm trying to get as much of that root ball out and then we just pull it out. And here's one plant and we're gonna just continue along the side. Here's another plant. I don't know if you wanna come in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see here's my potting soil. If I come in a little closer, I'm just digging deep, trying to find feel for the next root. And you can see here's the plant on this side over here. And I'm just going to pull it through like so, and out it comes. And you can see here are all the roots. And we'll add that to the collection. Here's the next plant. I feel the root in the back, just grabbing as much of it I can, and then I just pull it through. There it is. And we'll keep on going. We can take a little break here, and once I empty this pot out, we'll continue. Want to pause? Yeah. So we just finished emptying all of the strawberries out of this plant. You can see that all of these openings for inserting the strawberry plants are now gone. And at the very bottom of the container, there should be a hole. This is gonna allow for drainage, and drainage is critical. You gotta make sure that the water gets out of the pot whenever you go to watering it. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to take material such as this, and I've got some rocks around the garden, and I found some broken um, pieces of clay pot, and I'm going to put those here at the bottom of the plant like so. And that's gonna help allow the water to pass through the rocks and get into that drain hole as fast as possible. We wanna make sure that it's not clay or any mud or anything else that could possibly block the hole. Additionally, it's gonna help filter the potting soil from escaping out of the container as well. So this is gonna help slow down the water on its way out um, and also help with drainage. What we're gonna do next is start adding some soil back. I'm gonna use a little bit of last year's soil, which I've got here to my right, and we can put some of this back in here, but I'm also gonna mix it with, with some fresh potting soil as well. And if you come in a little closer, you'll see that these white dots in here are perlite. That also helps absorb water and also help to allow for um, good drainage as well. There's a lot of organic material in here and we're not using garden soil. We're not using an amend. We're not using um, you know, anything else that you'd use for your in-ground plantings. A potting soil is specifically designed to help absorb water and to allow the plants to remain more wet and to retain moisture between waterings better than your mixes designed for in-ground. And also do not use potting soil for your in-ground plantings. There's a reason um, for using potting soil for just your pots. And this is a product that I've um, picked up today. I've even um, shared some examples on how you can make your own potting soil using vermiculite, perlite. Um, you can use um, sphagnum peat moss um, in equal parts, all three of those. Or instead of the peat moss, you can be a little bit more um, ecologically friendly and conscious by using um, coconut core instead. Um, and I can put a link down below so you can see what that's about. But take a look a little closer. You can see that this is a product made by Kellogg's. It says Patio Plus Premium Outdoor Potting Mix and another organic product. And I'm just going to be mixing and alternating between some of last year's potting soil as I don't want it to go to waste. And I can see that last year it looks like I've used um, quite a bit of sand. So I've got the benefit of sand in here as well. So we're going to be putting both of these together. So I'm taking my one handful of last year's potting mix with one handful of this year's and then I'm gonna add a product like this and it's not the only product you can use but what's important is again I'm using an organic product this one's made by Espoma this is gonna help um, enrich the soil the percentages on here are three four four which means three percent nitrogen four percent phosphorus and four percent potassium and this is gonna help make sure that it's got all of the macronutrients that the um, plants are gonna need and it also has a lot of micronutrients. So this is derived from bone meal and feather meal and some manure, and it's got you know a lot more elements than just these three to help benefit plants. So we're gonna put, I would say, about an eighth of a cup. If you wanna come in a little closer, you can see how I've added that. And I'm just gonna mix 
all of that together. And now we can start with the plantings. What so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take one plant from last year. I'm gonna show you how you can recycle last year's plants and bring them back to life again. And what I'm gonna do here, if you come in a little closer, is I'm gonna remove all of the strawberries, any flowers, and all of the dead leaves from last year. Some more strawberries, stem, dry stems. All of that is gonna be cut off. What we're gonna do next, so you can see with the root ball, it's a little bit large. You can see that the stem, this is last year's stem. This is the underground part of the root. This just broke off as it was rotted. And I'm not gonna cut the roots about in half. And that's gonna help rejuvenate this structure. I've removed a lot of the weight off the top. This here is a um, leaf. It looks like some pests got to it. And we're gonna deal with pest control in a second. And now we've got a strawberry that looks nice and young and beautiful, ready to be inserted, like so, into the pot. And now we're just going to take some of last year's potting soil and put that around there. We'll take another scoop of um, new potting soil and put that around. And now we're just going to secure that in place like so. And we'll fill that up. Let me do a couple rounds of strawberry plants the same way. Here we can repeat this cycle real quick. Here's another plant that we um, talked about at the beginning. And again, yellow leaf, brown leaves, cut them out. Strawberries and fruit, even though they're green and it looks you know, tempting to just keep them on, they're coming off. We're gonna remove some of that root structure and the only way this is gonna work out and we're gonna have healthy, strong plants within the upcoming week with a lot more blossoms so we can have some fruit in a couple months is by doing exactly what we're doing. We're removing the load off the top. We're cutting the root structure in half to encourage a lot of new fresh roots and growth to work its way into this pot. And then we'll insert that like so. And you can see we're ending up with a pretty young looking strawberry pot. It's important also to make sure that when inserting your strawberry plants, that you get the crown of the strawberry above the soil level. If you plant them too deep, it's the worst thing you can do. Plants will rot and they won't grow as healthy and vigorously as if those crowns are exposed and left dry. So you just want them to come in contact with the soil but not be buried too deep into the strawberry um, hole. And that's it. And now we'll just continue going around. We'll take a little break now. I'll finish um, potting the rest and I'll share the next steps with you. So it's been about five minutes now. You can see that I just filled up every single hole here in my strawberry pot. You can see how much younger this plant already looks now and that this pot is off to a great start. And it's amazing that we've transformed these ugly old parent plants into this new rejuvenated strawberry pot. I've got one more hole left on this side to fill up and I wanna do that with you as we wrap and conclude this. This here is one of the runners. You can see that it was attached to the parent plant over here. This was the runner that came off the parent and created this new um, strawberry pup. And what we're gonna do is just remove it like so. The other important thing about these runner plants is by propagating strawberries by runners, we are creating genetically identical tasting fruit to the parent. So these are not grown by seed where they're random genetics and going to produce random flavors and random size and random yield. This is genetically identical to that parent plant of strawberries that me and my family love and we're continuing to propagate them here in our garden. And now we're just going to insert that. I want you to follow me from the inside. So if you take a look here, here's our potting soil. We've got a nice hole over here and we're just going to run these leaves through like so. And we're gonna make sure again that there's soil on the lower part. And we're gonna make sure the crown is resting above and not gonna get buried by the next layer of potting soil. And you can see that I've recycled almost all of last year's potting soil back into this. Very little has gone to waste. And I've been mixing it almost at a rate of 50% um, with last year's potting soil with 50% new potting soil. And what I've also been doing, as you saw at the beginning, when we filled it up, we um, enriched the soil with some 
organic fertilizer. I did the same at the middle, and now that we're here near the top, I'm just gonna take another handful of this potting soil, which we're gonna mix with last year's native potting soil. I'm gonna put that up to this point over here, and you can see how high I've gone. I'm right at the lower part of the brim, and go up a little higher. But this here is pretty much my reservoir for collecting water. You can see how much area I've left alone. I'm gonna add a little bit of fertilizer now to the top. And no need to go crazy with fertilizing right now. We're in February. The plant's metabolism and energy and needs are gonna increase between now and midsummer and then decline again. So this is just our warm up. We're enriching the soil and we're gonna continue feeding the plant once a month, every month, through this point right here, right at the top. We're not gonna be fertilizing all, the, all around the side. Everything we put here is gonna enrich the entire soil all the way down. So we've just done that, and now we're just going to add some wood chips over here. And what I'll do, just to demonstrate, as you can see when I water, the water's now gonna remain collected here like so. I'm gonna rinse off the leaves around in case I got any soil on the leaves. And you can see, this here is the watering well. And we'll continue to soak it, and we're gonna continue soaking it until we see the water running out the bottom. What I'm also gonna do, as I mentioned with the wood chips, is we're gonna use the wood chips as another way to organically feed the plants. It's also gonna keep the soil um, and aiding it with retaining the water. Um, and we'll just, and I think it also looks a little bit more cosmetically appealing like this instead of looking at some dirt. And we can continue watering through the top. In addition to, we talked about feeding your plants using a product such as this, a Spoma product. There's a few other organic products that I've had behind me the whole time I want to share with you as well. Um, you can do a liquid feed with a fish fertilizer. There's another liquid feed you can use with a fish and kelp fertilizer, which is a little bit more balanced. Instead of being 5% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, 1% potassium, this here actually has a more balanced um, percentage of 2 2 2. 2% 2 nitrogen, 2% phosphorus, 2% potassium. And here's another product which is granular based, like what we're use, just using, made by Dr. Earth as well. So those are just a few of the organic products you'll find. Um, and avoid the chemical stuff, which again, will not be feeding your soil um, microorganisms as the organic products do. And then plus, these are the products that are going into making your food. The nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are coming from organic sources. Um, so consider this, and it's just a few of the reasons to be doing things organically. Um, one last point I wanna share with you. A couple of the quick points I want to share with you. You may notice over here that this lemon tree, we just did a, um, a video where we pruned our Meyer lemons. I'll put that video link down below, but you'll notice that it's all coated with this white Ivy Organics paint, and that's this product over here. And the reason we did it is the whole canopy, which was once shaded, once we pruned it, is allowing too much light in here. And even though it's not the sunny time of the day here in the garden, um, there are a lot of plants, and I can put the video link where you'll see that um, an orange tree that I visited in North Hollywood suffered from third degree burns once they pruned and opened the canopy like so. And instead, so what we did was we coated it with this Ivy Organics. It's a three-in-one plant guard, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. It's now registered material for use in organic agriculture and it protects newly installed plants and trees and shields pruned and damaged surfaces. And that's what we used the product for um, last week. And what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna use a similar product on our strawberry plants. Let me position the strawberry plant over there, which is where it's gonna spend the rest of its um, year and the growing season. But I wanna share with you the saucer that I've also um, um, prepared. What you'll notice over here is I've got three marbles. I've got these green marbles that I glued, up, glued on with a waterproof glue. And the reason I've done this is so that when, the, when I go to watering the plant 
any water and moisture that's underneath it won't damage my decks. And especially if you have wooden decks, this could be a major issue. But what happens when I set this down, and I'm hoping you can capture this with the camera, you'll notice that there's now a space. If you come in a little closer, there's now a space between the saucer and the ground. It's not touching the ground. I can actually go with my hose and hose underneath here and clean any, any dirt and debris um, from, from getting on here. So that's the reason that I've got these marbles on here. And then I've got this actually sealed with a waterproof um, paint. And what we'll do is take our, we're gonna take our strawberry plant over here. And we're just gonna position it in this sa saucer, which I've already prepared the same way. And we'll set that down like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Ivory Organics. And this is a spray bottle ready to go. Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard spray on your trunks and branches and leaves. Protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. Ideal for newly installed plants and trees. Use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. It's a non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic product. And the reason we're gonna use this is when the sun comes up a little higher in the sky, one of the stresses plants feels is sun stress. And by putting on a reflective barrier, we're gonna be able to repel that excess sunlight. It also has seven natural oils I'll share with you as well. If you take a look over here, it says it's got castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil, all oils that naturally defend the plant against insects. So what we want to do is we want to make sure each one of these leaves stay alive, that no slugs or any other pests come and, and damage the one leaf because that one leaf is going to help create that root structure. It's going to help create more leaves and the flowers and the fruit. We want to make sure that these plants are off to a great start. And what I'll do is I'll spray each of these individual plants, like so. And you can see how easy that was. And now, we've got organic sunblock on these plants, and you can see the little white residue that's right here on the plants. And that's, and you can even smell the peppermint and the nice essential oils that are coming off of this plant. And that concludes it. I hope this helps you growing a lot more bountiful strawberries in your garden this growing season. If you found this video informative, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivory Organics. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.